Hello friends, the Bourbon Nerd here. Welcome to lesson 18 in my Bourbon School. And today I'm going to tackle the topic of light whiskey and what that is. And maybe you haven't heard about this light whiskey, uh, but you may have seen that there are certain products coming out there, uh, as you know, I have the example ne uh, next to me right here, where it simply says light whiskey on the label. And that's what I'll be covering today. And I just realized I actually don't own a bottle of light whiskey at this very moment. I do, however, have a little bit of a sample here that was drawn directly from a light whiskey barrel uh, about 10 years ago. It's about 135 proof, so close to hazmat. So I'm just going to save a little here. Whew. Oh dear. Wow. And while I'm, while I have this expression, I will just tell you about it in a second. Okay. So firstly, what I'll be covering in this lesson. So I will explain, you know, why it's called light whiskey. I would also explain <clears throat> obviously how it differs um, compared to bourbon and rye whiskey. I will also tell you a little bit about how this light whiskey thing was started because there's a special story behind that today, uh, behind that. And then I'll also end with uh, just giving you a sort of an update where light whiskey is in today's whiskey market. All right, so let's get started. So why is it called light whiskey? So I post, you know, four questions here, you know, is it because it has uh, less calories? Not really. You would think when it says light whiskey, it is not it has the same amount of calories uh, as normal whiskey. Is it because it has less alcohol? No, absolutely not. And some of them even have more alcohol than normal bourbon and rye. Is it then because the color is light, you think? Yeah, maybe. Uh, that's actually getting a little bit closer because it seems to be a little lighter in the color uh, compared to bourbon and rye. And there's a very good reason for that, which I'll cover in a couple of minutes. And then the final question here, is it because it maybe is a little bit lighter, so easier to drink? And yes, that is actually the reason. While uh, that was maybe the original reason behind it, I'm sort of questioning a little bit whether it's lighter or easier to drink. But let's cover that in a few moments. All right, so first I want to compare light whiskey to bourbon and rye, uh, just to see the difference. And first here I have, you know, bourbon and rye next to each other. Uh, as you may recall from some of the previous lessons, bourbon and rye, they're almost identical. They are basically two, in essence, really differences. Firstly, bourbon has to be made in the United States. Uh, rye can be made in the entire world. And of course, the grain type used in bourbon is corn. And of course, not surprisingly for rye whiskey, it is rye. But other than those two differences with some very small other details, bourbon and rye are essentially following the same rule set. But then if we compare it to light whiskey here, you see um, there are some changes here. I'm, I'm gonna take you through them real quick. First, in terms of the grain type, um, I say uh, corn there with a little bit of an asterisk because you can actually technically do any type of grain to make uh, light whiskey. But uh, most, if not all of the manufacturers uh, use corn and they actually use 90 to 99% corn. Uh, for making light whiskey. So, so corn is by far a predominant grain out there, but technically you could use uh, other grain types. And then uh, the next real uh, important thing is, uh, remember from bourbon and rye, you could only distill it to maximum 160 proof. For light whis whiskey, that level goes up to 190 proof, so almost, um, you know, 200 proof, so uh, clear alcohol, uh, but, but it's, it's almost up there. And then, there's actually a minimum distillation proof as well. I mean, for bourbon and rye, it's completely up to the manufacturer, you know, how low they want to distill uh, their whiskey. It's up to them. There are no rules governing on this. But for light whiskey, you have to distill it as a minimum of 160 proof, so 80 ABV. So it's so quite high there. And then uh, if you remember one of the previous lessons, we talked about, you know, barrel entry proof, the proof level when the whiskey goes into the barrel for aging. Uh, for bourbon and rye, it's 125 proof. That is the maximum. And there is no maximum for light whiskey. So you can just put it directly from the distillation process. So in principle, 190 proof into the barrel. And I don't know, maybe some manufacturers actually do that. And then uh, maybe the final thing to also um, uh, point out here that 
um, while it also needs to be matured in oak like bourbon and rye light whiskey, uh, it doesn't need to be matured in new oak. In fact, depending on how you interpret the rules, uh, you could also interpret it like it's actually forbidden to um, store it in uh, or age it in, in new wood. And not only that, the wood that you would age the light whiskey in um, doesn't even need to be charred. So, so there's quite some significant uh, changes, uh, differences between bourbon and rye categories and then light whiskey. And if we look at those main differences there, so I sort of made a list here, you know, uh, because, you know, once you think about it, okay, so that can be good, right? Because all these bourbon and rye rules were made for a reason to ensure quality. So if we look at the higher distillation proof, the higher you go, the less flavor you have. The same with the next thing here, the minimum distillation proof, the higher the minimum distillation proof, the less flavor you have. So that's also interesting. And used barrels also give less flavor compared to new barrels. And of course, uncharred barrels also give less flavor to, to the whiskey. So I wonder what is going on here. So all of those rules for light whiskey, they're pretty much made to ensure that there's less flavor in, uh, in whiskey compared to bourbon and rye. But of course, there is a good reason there. Because uh, when you look at the time when a light whiskey was introduced, I have four images there. And by first glance, you probably see, so what's the Woodstock image doing there? And it actually has something to do with it because we have to go back to the 60s here. Actually, the, um, the rules of uh, light whiskey was passed in 1968. And if you remember, especially in the US, that was the time when, you know, revolt from the young people, the hippies and all that. Everybody enjoyed themselves at Woodstock, etc. And that was sort of like a revolt, if you can say, against, you know, the parent generation. So everything the parents back then did was wrong. And all the products that they drank, like the whiskeys, were also wrong. So the young generation and also a little bit of the not so young generation started to uh, go more into vodka and imported whiskies like Canadian Club or um, Johnny Walker here. So the American whiskey industry was under con really, really, really a lot of pressure at that time. And they, they needed to think out of the box to recoup some of the market share they were losing. And um, some genius somewhere thought, okay, let's introduce a new category called light whiskey. And um, you see, I have a couple of ads here. They're obviously back from early 70s or late 60s when this was introduced. And I've zoomed in here on a little part of uh, one of the ads here. And it basically says lighter than scotch and smoother than Canadian. So it was very, very clear what they were going for um, against, you know, Canadian whiskey or Scotch whiskey and also vodka and to some extent gin that was really becoming popular. So the whole reasoning behind the movement to light whiskey was that it should taste less of whiskey than it was. So, and was this a success? <laughs> no, it was a real gigantic fiasco. Um, uh, you know, sales were not nowhere even close to what people were hoping back then. And <clears throat> I think um, they they misread basically their their market. Um, they were bringing a product to the market that were just not as good as all the other products. They were trying to, they sort of felt between two chairs, the people that were very pure, that only drank vodka, which has sort of no flavor odor at all. And then the people that really liked the whiskey. So they, they decided to be smack in the middle where literally no one really wanted that. So uh, that was actually the reason why it was brought to the market and was a really, really failure. And it sort of really disappeared from the scene since the late seventies and until about 10 years ago. So if we look at where uh, light whiskey is today, um, something interesting is actually going on because I have uh, some examples here um, and there seems to be more and more light whiskey products coming back to the market. 
And it turns out that, um, I mean, a little bit like this one I'm uh, doing here, because this is sort of only, I think this is, was eight years, was eight years old when this was given to me, this sample. Uh, it is still, still a little bit harsh, but I think people are finding out that light whiskey, especially with the higher proof and when it's got a lot of age, and some of these products here are like 13, 14, 16, 25 years old, uh, quite phenomenal. And, Com that age combined with a high ABV makes actually a very interesting product. It actually is very nice to drink. And I think there's a little bit of movement back to light whiskey, um, especially if you give it a lot of age to sort of compensate for some of the things you were actually ironically trying to avoid in the old days, the flavor. It's coming back when you age it for a very long time. A little bit like Scotch whiskey also have a lot of flavor when you when you store it or age it in a very long time. So. I don't know if you come across a light whiskey product uh, in one of your liquor stores, maybe you want to try a bottle. Uh, they're typically not very expensive and it is a very interesting taste profile. And it actually um, produces some really, really good um, cocktails as well, especially whiskey sours. Uh, also tried it in a in old fashioned, not my favorite, but whiskey sour is really, really good with a light whiskey. So there you have it. That was uh, light whiskey. So basically, um, Higher distillation proof, a minimum a distillation proof as well. No rules on the alcohol level when you put it into the barrel and you can basically use whatever grain type you want. And it has to then go into non-charred uh, and uh, uh, also not new uh, barrels. Cool. So that was it. Thank you for watching. See you soon again. Cheers.